Hello, I've been requested to do a video of how to replace the half shaft oil seals. So I've got this tractor in here today to do the seal this side and I've already taken off the hydraulic casting to get access to the end of the half shaft and before I start on it I've put a little cut with the angle grinder across the end of the shaft and the nut so when I replace it you know if that mark lines up you're back in about the right place. If you just take a look you'll see the uh, cut in the end of the shaft down there. The next procedure is to remove the bolts holding the seal housing on this end of the half shaft. Uh, it's a 9 16 bolt head and it's a little bit tricky to get at so get a screwdriver and clean all the dirt away and then I found that a T-bar being smaller than a ratchet you can just get in and get on the bolt and start to undo it. Once you've removed all the bolts if you get a hammer they'll just tap loose Once you've got the split pin out, you can usually undo the nut by hand. This one's a bit stiff, so I've built myself a special tool that goes on them. And with that, I can undo the, the nut and remove it. Now I've removed the nut from the inside, the next job is to pull the half shaft out. Now, sometimes these are a press fit in the inner bearing and sometimes they're just they're a slide fit and you never know. So let's see what this one's like. This one's a slide fit. The other one, on the other side, it took me 10 minutes with a sledgehammer to tap it on the back here and get it out. But now, all you have to do is just gently ease her out And that's the shaft removed. Once you've got the half shaft out, inside here you'll find the most disgusting mess. It's the one part of the tractor gearbox that you can't drain. And in there you'll probably find a quarter of an inch thick black sludge like mayonnaise and perhaps a bit of water underneath it. And one of the best ways I've found to get it out is a piece of 22mm uh, copper pipe in the end of a wet and dry vacuum cleaner and you just have to go in there and get it all out. Once you've vacuumed all the dirt out of there, uh, it's just a matter of getting your hand in there and giving it a good wipe and a clean out. Um, you can rip an old uh, cotton shirt up for this uh, and get it in on your hand or, or, or perhaps an old sock. That, that's if you've not already used up all your old socks. Right, the next problem is to get this bearing off. Now, the manual says use so-and-so, so-and-so bearing extractor. We haven't all got that. And to get the bearing off, you need to get a chisel on the joint between the bearing and the wear sleeve behind it. Now, the problem is there's this little lip around the edge of the seal holder. Doesn't, doesn't actually need to be there, at least not all of it. So I've got the angle grinder in with a slitting disc and I've cut about two inch of that register and then broke it off with a chisel. And now I can get a nice sharp wood chisel, I know it's a shame but I only use it for scraping gaskets, down onto the joint between the wear sleeve and the bearing and when I hit it, it'll push the bearing forward. And then you have to use thicker chisels, bits of packing and such, to get the bearing off. You just want to take a look closely at where I've cut that. Okay, I've now got the bearing to start moving. I actually found the wood chisel didn't work because the plastic head absorbs the energy. I had to use a cold chisel, you get it in the gap and it pushes the bearing forward. Once you get down that the chisel is actually touching the half shaft, you have to resort to some packing and what you do is you put a piece of packing in the gap, then you put the chisel down and once again 
hit the chisel and with the packing in place that forces the bearing forward another 5mm and then you put two bits of packing in and hit it again it now wants half a turn because the bearing is that far off it's starting to jam on the shaft so you turn it over half a turn, get the chisel in, and a few more bits of packing, and I'll have the bearing all the way off so that you can get to the seal housing. I now have the bearing off the back journal, and the bearing is free to slide all the way down to the front journal where sadly once again you have to knock it off and this is a bit easier notice I've put it on a bit of wood so that it doesn't damage the threads That's the bearing off, and take that out of the way. And the next thing to come off is the seal carrier that we've been after all the time. That's the part with the seals in. Left on here is what they call the wear sleeve. Now this is a, a replaceable part that I've got to take off and fit a new one because it goes rusty and it get wear grooves in it from the seals so in a minute we'll come to how we'll come to how we remove that we've now got the seal housing off and I've took the old seals out I've ran the die grinder over that sharp edge there to so we don't damage the new seals as they go in the old wipers okay so I'm gonna let that go again here's the new seal or two of them these are just standard three and three eight by four and three eight by half inch oil seal and they go in with the open side towards you I've made myself a little bit to go on them so I can push them in without damaging them in fact we'll put that one in that way first for a start And then we just put it in the vise like that and wind her up that's pushed the first one in and I'll turn it around the proper way line it up Turn it round. That's pushed the first seal partially way home. Then there's a second seal goes on top. And once again, I'll just put it in the flat side to get her started. Now that seal's halfway home, I'll put it in the correct way 
where it matches the diameter and then I'll push it all the way home. I usually do this outside on the press but as I've got Mary here filming me I've struggled to do it in the vice. It's a lot easier in the press when you've got it flat. <laughs> okay I've now pressed the seals in and they're ready to go back on the half shaft but next we've got to replace the wear collar on the half shaft. This is the wear collar here. There's a brand new one I'm going to fit later. Now, normally if you get this off, it's shrunk into place, i.e. it's put on hot and then it contracts. So, we'd normally resort to the angle grinder to get this off. But stuff that for a game of soldiers, there's an easier way. I've got a nice new hammer here with a sharp corner. And I'm going to start hitting that like you're rolling out a piece of pastry and it will stretch and I'm going to angle the hammer so I actually put dents in it that helps with the stretching and this is how it goes Okay, I've now put about 20 blows into it in three places round and the collar is now loose. And that's the easy way of getting the old collar off. Okay, we're now ready to put the new wear sleeve on the half shaft. I've been over the half shaft with a file and any little burrs that I created when I was hammering the bearing off or with the chisel prising the bearing away from the wear collar for a start, I've levelled them so that the bearing can go back on okay. The wear sleeve has to be heated to expand it to get it on. But before we do that, just a little exercise. There's your wear sleeve on. This is an old wear sleeve that's ready. I've ground off any little bumps from hammering it, that goes on, and then here I've got a piece of heavy steel pipe that weighs about, I don't know, two or three kilo, that goes on. When I come back with a hot wear sleeve, I'll drop it on. It should drop into place, but if it doesn't, on goes a used wear sleeve as protection, and then this piece of heavy steel pipe is used as a slide hammer to knock the wear sleeve into place before it fully cools, otherwise you'll never move it again. So now I'm going to take all these off and I'm off to the gas ring to heat up the wear sleeve. Now stand back a bit. Hey! Voila! Straight into place. Brilliant. How hot was it? Uh, about 225 degrees centigrade. Oh, that's wonderful. No need for any hammering. That's dropped straight into place. Right, let that cool. And uh, I can start putting the uh, seal collar back over it, ready for insertion. Okay, the new wear sleeve is now shrunk into place and cooled off. I've glued a gasket the seal housing and I've smeared the seals with grease to keep them well lubricated until the tractor's filled up with oil and moved. The reason I glue this gasket on is when we put the half shaft back in the tractor we don't bolt this up immediately because the seals have a tight grip on the sleeve and you can't feel the end float in the half shaft. So I've just glued that on so that it doesn't drop and get damaged and we put the shaft in, set up the end float and then I'll put the bolts in and tighten this up but the glue keeps it nice and safe stuck to there. Now this goes back on and just wobble it over the wear sleeve and just leave it right down like that. Next the bearing goes on just drop that on and I'll get a drift and knock it back into place you don't need to watch me making all that noise and 
Next we'll be putting it back in the tractor. Now I've put the bearing back on, it's time to put it back in. You have to look inside and check the gear's not tipped and just ease it back in but she'll just push back in and uh, in a few minutes I'll be putting the nut on. Well putting this back in is really a two man job. I've just had Mary put the camera down and she just had a crowbar in the bottom of the uh, axle casing just holding the gear vertical because they keep tipping over and while she held it I just took the weight of this and with the sledgehammer just tapped her home. She's in now, I can go inside, I shall put the nut on the end of the shaft, tighten it up as tight as I can, hand tight to seat the bearings and then have a look to see if the lines roughly align because I've changed the wear collar so it won't go back in exactly the same place but if it's close I know that there's nothing stuck in the wrong place and then it's a matter of just tightening it up, back a little bit, give it a tap and then pull it up again. Um, I've got to look in the book to see what the exact settings are. It used to be two to six thou end float, but they found they had a lot of leakage because the end float also give movement that way and when the seals get hard, it leaks. So the modern setting is to set them up with just a little bit of preload so that there's no movement at all and you just have to use your judgment on that one.